All right, everybody, we're here at the Liuhe Tourist Night Market in Kaohsiung. It's about six o'clock right now, so it hasn't really popped off yet. I like this market in particular because even though it says tourist in the title, uh, the food is actually pretty good. Uh, I think it's a lot better than most night markets in Taipei. We really wanted to share this with everybody, so if you want to know what one of the better night markets are in Taiwan, this is definitely it. And also the Fengjia night market in Taizong that we went to is also delicious. So the first stop we're gonna do, uh, we had this the last time we were here, it's like a dumpling place. Uh, so like a boiled dumpling stand. It's pretty good, let's go check it out. So we just ordered, we got 10, that's the minimum. It's pretty cool though, I mean they're just making them right there, rolling out the dough, you know, stuffing them and wrapping them up. Uh, so it's, you know, for a westerner that just seems crazy, you know, you're getting this handmade stuff on the road and it's super cheap. Let's try this. <laughs> I really like their dumpling. Their, their dough is not that thick. It's kind of not chewy. It's soft. Um, and inside it's with like some vegetables and pork, of course. Right, I'm gonna give it a shot. Their filling is really, really nice in a way where you can taste all the individual ingredients. It's not just kind of like mushed together. Well, it's physically mushed together, but um, well, you, you can taste the individual ingredients. The uh, dough is not, the dough doesn't really have a bite to it. It's, it's just soft like Anita was saying. And, yeah, you can probably eat about 50 of these things if you wanted to. <laughs> I kind of want to eat one more. Oh, yeah. It's really hard not to eat all of them right now. <laughs> yeah, I try not to eat too much dough or wheat, but yeah, some of the really good stuff in Taiwan is like noodle based and, you know, dumpling and, you know, that's, that's pretty tasty stuff. This looks good. What is this? Right across from the dumpling place, which is right here, <laughs> there's a uh, there's like a lamb soup stand. Um, so we ordered a uh, thin sliced lamb rare with like a Chinese medicine based herbal soup. A lot of the soups in Taiwan are like designed to bu or like repair or invigorate the uh, body, you know. So this is full of a bunch of herbs and um, yeah. So it's designed to make you feel better. So <laughs> let's uh. Let's get into it and see how I feel because we're both a little tired right now. <laughs> so this this style of preparation where it's you know hot soup with the rare meat um, is pretty popular in the south of Taiwan. They have a lamb version which is this place and also like a beef version which is also very popular for breakfast. Generally like a, it's usually a sweet sauce. So. Yeah. Grab some meat, dip it in. Pop it in your mouth. Oh, this is nice. And usually the soups come with fresh ginger sliced into it too. I really love this kind of thing because I like soup, I like bone broth, I like lamb, and I like beef, so it kind of has everything. Oh, wow, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a bone broth too. It's really rich and fatty. And the Chinese herbs actually aren't super, super, super strong, which is surprising. Usually they tend to go a little overboard <laughs> when you order like a Zongyao style soup. But yeah, this is pretty nice. Oh my God, we just finished with that Chinese medicine lamb soup and I feel super invigorated. I don't know what it is, but every time I have like a good bone broth, it's just like taking a Red Bull for me or something. Maybe it's all the nutrients, I don't know, but. I'm pumped, ready to eat some more. Let's do this. In Taiwan, we have a trend.
hand of brown sugar milk tea. You can see it like everywhere in the street, the tea shop, they all have this item. So it's basically have milk tea, bubbles and brown sugar inside. And you can feel the brown sugar down here which is a little hot. So good. This one is not that sweet. I like it. And the bubble, of course, is pretty chewy and soft. Yeah. <laughs> you want to try it? Yeah. All right. Desserts aren't my thing, but I should go for it. <laughs> well, it's pretty delicious. The um, tapioca balls are actually pretty... Um, they're pretty soft. The inside has a little bit of bite, but they're really nice. They're like little soft pillows of tapioca, caramely goodness. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. Oops. <laughs> we forgot to pay. I have a uh, little Taiwan specialty here. Pig's feet. <laughs> Braised pig trotters, if you want to sound fancy. <laughs> so we just stopped into this place and we got a lonely little pig's foot slash ankle. Uh, I think this is actually the ankle piece, but uh, it's slow braised, uh, not unlike the row. I actually haven't eaten this in a very long time, uh, but I figured I'd introduce it uh, because it's it's kind of a unique thing, you know, it's very gelatinous, uh, very fatty. Um, it might look a little scary, but inside here is where all the magic happens. Mm. Whoa. Yeah, that, that skin is like, it's almost like bubble gum. Very soft and chewy. The interesting mouthfeel. Mm. Normally you'd get this over rice, but you know, it's definitely heavy. I split it open so you have the bone marrow. Forget pork chops. If you want like some luscious, delicious flavor, you, you just get one of these on rice and oh yeah, you'll be happy. My entire mouth and lips are just coated in pork fat. That's good stuff. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're gonna do the uh, Taiwan style oyster omelet. So this is a definite. Taiwanese night market staple. Uh, it's basically an oyster omelet, but they mix it with some very sticky starch, and then they throw down some vegetables and some bean sprouts, and then slather it in this like semi-sweet, thick sauce. No, so this thing is like a textural wonder. Oh. Those oysters are good. Let's try to get a little of everything in the bite. Here we go. It's got a nice crisp to it. Nice and gooey. Mm. A little bit of sweetness. Wow, this is nice. This is actually a really good version of this. I mean, it can go terribly wrong if you get some bad oysters or something. It's, it's just nasty, but uh, this is good. And if oysters aren't really your thing, you can order a shrimp version too. Um, this can be found at most night markets too, but everything so far in Yoha has been really, really good versions of each dish. So yeah, they do a pretty good job in this night market. Hey, that was definitely, I don't want to say the best version I've had, but it was pretty good. I like how their starch is super gooey. It almost tastes like mochi or something. It's pretty nice. A lot of uh, local people here, like people I know, they think Liuhe night market is kind of like touristy. 
but the food actually is pretty good. It has everything you have to try in the night market. Yeah, I definitely second that sentiment. Everything is a good version of that particular dish. <laughs> and we've already been here twice, and I think we've tried a lot of the food here, and it's pretty good. Sugar cane juice for Daniel. It's fresh sugar cane, and then they juice it in a machine. And this is what you get. It tastes pretty amazing. And after all this heat and walking around in the humidity, it's uh, it's some nice refreshment. Sometimes you got to be careful with the sugar cane juice because they can kind of butcher it and start putting a bunch of sugar and syrup and whatever the hell they do. And it tastes nasty, but this tastes really good. It's not that sweet. It has a very natural flavor to it, and it's good. And apparently it has a lot of nutrients and stuff too, so well, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I think that's gonna do it for us. Call in the night, pretty full. Hopefully you'd wanna check this stuff out when you're in Taiwan and we always like showing everybody what to eat. <laughs> Anything else? Hope you like our video today. <laughs> yeah, like and subscribe. It's a cool thing to do. <laughs>